There are a lot of cool games out there, but not everyone has time to play them. So here's a sloppy summary of Helltaker. These days, people aren't really going crazy for puzzle games. You're not gonna see people simping or going gaga for a Tetris block. At least, I hope not. We all know that sex sells, so what do you do? You can slap a cute devil girl on your game, but why stop there? Just add a dozen more and you got Helltaker. People are always lining up around the puzzle block, ready to spend their money on some waifus. But the thing is, this game's free. Helltaker was created as a passion project by one guy, and he is doing the devil's work as this game has an art style that is charming as any succubus. You know, games often want you to relate to the main character, get you to be really engaged with the story. But more often than not, it just doesn't click for me. But then comes along our protagonist Helltaker, who one day decides he wants to form a harem of demon girls. Never have I related to a character so fast it had me pointing at the screen like Leonardo DiCaprio, saying, that's me. But how does one go about gathering a harem of demon girls? Obviously, by solving puzzles to a hypnotic beat. So the game starts out and you meet your bud, Beelzebub, who acts as the narrator and tells you to go find some maidens. Talk about deja vu, but the goal is to reach the end where the demon girl is. You can kick the skeletons around who don't seem to mind, I guess they're used to it in hell, but if you kick them into something, they do explode, and you can also push some rocks around, but they don't break. You also have a limited number of moves before you're smited to smithereens, but before you know it, you're back and moving and grooving to the music. But once you reach the first demon, Pandemonica, you may have to put your non-existent social skills to the test, where you'll be presented with two options, but she'll only join your harem if you choose the correct answer. Oh god, what do I choose? Uh, she's the tired demon, so I guess we'll choose to serve her? Oh, thank god. If you succeed, she'll explode into a bunch of hearts and join your party, where you can ask her for advice that may or may not help you on the stage, such as warning you about the spikes, as well as just to get to know them better. The next girl you run into is Modius, the Lust Demon. Now, if you were worried about choosing the wrong option and missing out on a demon girl, you don't have to worry about it because uh, choosing the wrong option ends up killing you. So you're gonna have to restart the level, including the puzzle, but this means if you have a good short-term memory, you'll probably succeed on your second try. If you're adamant about getting a demon harem but you're bad at puzzles, Modius actually tells you in level 3 that you can actually skip all the puzzles in the pause menu. But as someone who enjoys the challenge, we're gonna listen to Panamonica, who tells us to not spend too much time kicking skeletons around and we should be able to solve this. For the most part, puzzles are designed to be solved in the exact number of moves given, so it can be kind of frustrating if you're like one move away. Very fitting for Puzzle 3, you get a 3-in-1 deal with Cerberus, the Triple Demon. Okay, so last time I said deal, no questions asked, that was wrong, so we're gonna go with the other option, and... Fuck. <laughs> Even if you fail, I love the little flavor text you get when you die. Even though you can retry, deep down I know that I'm currently 1 for 3. Sometimes the advice you get from the girls aren't exactly helpful. Cerberus tells us that they smell fruits and vodka, which means Molina, the sour demon, is around the corner, and that she's a bit hard to get. But I don't even get what a sour demon is. Uh, the first option seems kinda creepy, so we'll go with option 2? Oh, I'm so bad at this. Saying, I'd sure love to play with you to a girl just seems creepy, but I guess Melina interprets that as playing video games together. Stage 5 mixes things up by adding spikes that pop up every other time you move. Here you'll also meet Zadrata, who we'll just call the bad demon. But she is actually eager to join your harem, but if you reject her, she decides to join anyways, so I guess that's my second successful demon girl. In stage 6, if you ask for advice, it turns out that, uh, Zadrata, what a surprise, is a bad demon. She doesn't exactly get along with Melina, so in order to prevent the harem from descending into chaos, you can kill them both or you can kill yourself. Which seems like a lose-lose situation, because if you try to kill them, I think they would kill you. But even if you try, Panda Monica ends up stopping you. So maybe a demon harem wasn't exactly the best idea. But fortunately, we meet Azazel. Curiously, unlike other stories, she's called the Curious Angel in this game. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to lie to an angel. Wouldn't want to go to hell. Uh, cool. 
Moving on, we see that Azazel is currently doing some research on some demons. She ends up talking to Modius, the lustful demon. Perhaps this is what causes her to fall and become a complete degenerate. In stage 7, we meet Justice, the awesome demon, who is pretty awesome because she thinks our puzzle solving skills are awesome. She's also pretty laid back, so you just straight up ask her to join your harem and she accepts, which is awesome. Apparently, no matter which option you pick, she joins your harem, which is, you guessed it, pretty awesome. In stage 8, you'll see a line of skeletons, and if you try to kill them all, you'll end up dying. So the lesson here is to not be rude and cut in line. Finally, you get to meet Lucifer, the CEO of Hell, who then gives you the opportunity to pledge your soul to her. And in the name of science, I chose to accept so that everyone can learn from me, and not because I'm a simp. In the event that you ask her to join your harem, you can also offer coffee, turn-based strategies, and chocolate pancakes. The three essential things for happiness, which is a very good trade offer if you ask me. And naturally, she accepts. I mean, who wouldn't? But the game isn't over yet because you've come across the hardest puzzle yet. Even Lucifer tells you to skip it because she has no confidence in you. But Justice is awesome because she believes you can, and convinces Lucifer to agree, even if I did take that offer. And after some delightful dialogue between the two, you get to enjoy kicking rocks. And hopefully you really enjoy kicking rocks because this took me 15 minutes. After completing the level and going through the gates of hell, you meet Judgment, who ends up torturing you, and eventually decides to take it up a notch by putting you in a large torture device contraption thing, which is basically just a large treadmill with spikes that also fires chains. This is actually the first non-puzzle section where you actually had to avoid the chains in real time. It is somewhat forgiving because you're allowed to be hit four times before you die. There are also four phases, and each one ramps up in difficulty, adding things like sideway chains or ones in a cross pattern. So you do your best to survive as long as you can, and eventually, there will be chains that you can kick. But I don't think it's too bad, I was able to do the whole thing on my second try. But between each phase, you are treated to some dialogue. There are some choices here, but just like Justice, all of them are the correct answer, so don't worry about it. Just choose whichever option you fancy, and eventually your flattery will cause judgment to have poor judgment, and the High Prosecutor will let you go, and even join your harem. Once your harem is completed, you return back home to Earth, where you learn the harsh truth that harems are time-consuming and very exhausting, as trying to please everyone is just hard to do. But you wouldn't have it any other way. And what better way to make everyone happy than with chocolate pancakes? In the epilogue, Lucifer becomes a great helper in the kitchen. Ironically, Modius, the lustful demon, ends up finding romantic comedies very kinky. You ask Justice why she never takes off her shades, and you learn that she's blind, and bets that you're actually Cyclops. You also learn that once Panda Monica has her coffee, she turns into the sadistic demon, and she's very strict about her coffee. Melina's pretty cool because she likes playing shitty video games and alcohol. Zajada might be your thing if you like feisty girls. Azazel ends up being one step closer to becoming the fallen angel that we all know. And Cerberus ends up causing some mischief which attracts the police, which Judgment offers to dispose of. But you defuse the situation with some more chocolate pancakes. So that is the main story of Helltaker, a very fun, delightful game. And it's pretty short, it only took me an hour, so I definitely recommend you go check it out if you have a chance. There's also some fun secrets, like if you lie to Azazel, you can get into heaven. You can solve Melina's puzzle without grabbing the key, and you can find an ancient inscription, which has some directions on it, and if you find them all and do them on this carpet here during the epilogue, you'll open up a little secret portal, where you'll find your buddy Beelzebub trapped for eternity. Lucifer warns you that if you step through the portal, you'll also be trapped there forever. And should you ignore Lucifer's warning, you can actually go through the portal, where you'll be stuck with Beelzebub, who thankfully changes her appearance to something a little more appealing. But I don't know why the Helltaker would do this, because you're giving up your hard-earned harem for one girl that you've barely talked to. But hey, maybe you're really into flies, I'm not one to judge. 
but apparently this ending is canon, because the story isn't quite over yet, because a year later, the creator actually released a bonus chapter called Exam Taker. Taking place after the main story, you play as an experimental demon called Subject 67, forced to run tests designed by Loremaster, the science demon, who drops several hints that she's actually a Zazzle after she became a fallen angel, and made Lucifer her maid. But as expected, Exam Taker is a lot harder. There are six puzzles, the odd numbered puzzles are like the original game, Loremaster even says five is pretty sadistic, and I would have to agree because it took me 25 minutes. On the other hand, all the even number puzzles are all timing based, so you actually have to move in time and dodge the lasers. But the sixth one was pretty brutal, I literally stared at this grid for two whole minutes just trying to figure out the pattern, trying to imagine it in my head like I was freaking shadow boxing. Once you complete the sixth trial, Loremaster tells you of one last test against a final boss, and if you win, you get some apple pie made by Lucy. But unfortunately, the final boss this time doesn't pull any punches, it throws spikes and lasers and a really big laser at you. And unlike the original game, you die instantly if you get hit by anything. And there are three phases. Thankfully, you do get a checkpoint at each phase, and while there's a lot going on the screen, they are the same every time so you can memorize them. Phase 2 even has random missiles, and eventually, Phase 3 just decides to throw everything at you, like, at once. Honestly, it's a lot of BS, but it's pretty fun if you like a challenge. But I'm sure if you're just in it for the story, you can skip it if you want. But the exam taker portion of it took me about 45 minutes. But in the end, you get to see Justice also become the apple pie demon. And on the surface, everybody becomes friends, until you learn that Lucifer is secretly plotting to overthrow Loremaster and reclaim hell. She gets you a nice suit and asks you to join her when the time comes. She also says you remind her of a man she once knew, implying that Helltaker is still stuck in that dimension with Beelzebub. But big shoutouts to these three for creating such an awesome game. Hopefully one day we can get another Helltaker game, but if you want to see more Helltaker stuff, you can read the comics on the creator's Twitter. But that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching, subscribing would be awesome, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye